Okay, so just going to give a quick walkthrough of the Shadow CLJS and Expo environment. So I've got Shadow running here and I've got Expo running here and I have downloaded the Expo Go app on my phone, signed in with my account and now I can run development code on my actual physical device without Xcode or a cable or any of that stuff. So it's pretty handy. If I tap this project, it will open it and it will download the bundle from my PC and run my app. Now you'll see that if I shake my phone, I get these Expo tools such as Inspector and Performance Monitor. There's also this fast refresh option, which I've disabled because I want to use Shadow's hot code reloading and I don't want the two to interfere, which they do if they're both on. However, there's some weirdness because when you start the Expo Go app and it's disabled because you had disabled it before, it's not really disabled because if I change home to uh, this header at the top to home to, you can see it updates that shadow and then I get a white screen, which is React Native's refresh. And now I'm on an old bundle. It's like overwritten what shadow had loaded in. And this only happens on closure script files, but also on the JavaScript files that are directly required by the closure script. So if I go to my components namespace, you can see I require a bunch of different JavaScript files for my views. So this routine player, for example, is when I uh, click a routine. And if I go to routine player and change something here, so let's change the word shuffle to be shuffle to. If I save this, I get a white screen, it loses my state. And when I go back here, it still doesn't say shuffle to. If I make another change, I just added a blank line, save this again, then it goes back here, but now it says shuffle to. I'm always one save behind where I should be. So clearly some thing about React Native's hot code reloading is broken. But if I go into a child component, so when I click start on one of these activities, it opens up this modal and that is player modal. So this player modal is um, not required from any closure script files. It's required from that player list file. If I go find this background color, I guess, let's, I don't know, change this to red. You'll see that it updates and I don't get the white screen and I don't get the refresh. So I think what's happening here is Shadow is not getting involved because Shadow doesn't know about this file, but React Native's fast refresh is able to do the refresh without losing the state or doing a full on reload of the code. I don't understand this stuff well enough to really say what's going on here. And I don't know why React Native's refresh is happening when it's turned off, but something interesting that happens, if I shake my phone, I click enable fast refresh, I shake my phone again, and I click disable fast refresh. And now I change the same bit of code back to white and I save it, nothing happens at all. Um, so again, I think this is because Shadow doesn't know that anything's changed because this is not in Shadow's source paths. And React Native's hot code reload is now actually disabled because turning it off and on again changes something somehow. Who knows? So what I've kind of settled on is when I need to change my JavaScript components like this, I shake my phone and I click enable and you can see there it's, it's changed. And now if I make this red again, oops, then it goes red and I get my hot code reloading working. But obviously if I change some closure script files, they would conflict with each other and I get old versions of the bundle. So then if I need to do that, I just shake my phone and I disable fast refresh. And now if I go back to my index file and I change home to home, home to to home, it works. I don't get the white screen and React Native's refresh doesn't inter interfere. Yeah, it's weird, but that's what it <laughs> that's that's where I am. Maybe when I understand it a bit further, I will give an update or something, but 
for now that actually works pretty well. You just have to remember to turn it on when you do JavaScript and turn it off when you do ClojureScript and yeah, things mostly work fine. So the second thing I want to show is the REPL workflow. So when you start Shadow, it will start an NREPL process and I can connect to that using CIDR Connect CLGS or whatever the equivalent is in your editor. The defaults here are all fine. So now I've run that, it's connected to that NREPL process. And just to prove that that is actually connected to my physical device here, I can do a JS alert, hi, execute that, and I get hi on my device. So to give another demo of where the REPL can be really useful, and also to show off this Shadow CLGS console, which I only just found out about. So this gives, I guess, info about your build, but also there's this inspector tool. And if I type tap and something that I want to inspect, say this form data from my add routine function. So if I now go and add a routine and just type in some random stuff, and submit it, you'll see that Shadow has intercepted it and I can now play with it in this sort of REPL within the Shadow console. So if I wanted to turn this into a closure object, I can reference the variable with. And now this is a closure thing, I can pretty print it to get a better view. And you can see that this would be very useful for inspecting large data structures. I actually have a macro for taking a variable like this form data and it will put it into this def binding. So this is binding form data to form data where the first form data here is just this global binding and the second one is the prop being passed in. If I put an underscore here just to make it not complain and I edit my routine and click submit which will call this add routine function again then I can evaluate form data and I have the actual object. And because it's bound here, I can you know, wrap other things in a def like so and run that. And now I can get rid of that and data is now actually bound to the result of this. So you know, I could get the type and I could bind this pass routines function here. It's a lot easier if you're working with things that aren't in lets because you can just evaluate a function and that does pretty much the same thing. In things that are in lets you you have to do this def death thing. Maybe there's a maybe there's a better way that I don't know about. But once this is bound, I could run this pass routines and I could see the result of it and I could, you know, do the same thing within these sort of map functions and inspect the data at every point. But hopefully you can see that this is a a very useful superpower to have just to be able to you know evaluate things and see the results of them in real time without needing to save files or worry about hot code reloading in any case i think that's enough for this demo feel free to clone the project on github and play around with it yourself or start your own one and as always ask any questions and i will do my best to answer